Hey guys, from out in the ocean, hope you enjoy this week's episode. A huge thanks to all of our supporters. If you'd like to support these videos, be sure and check out our website or Patreon page. And don't forget to subscribe right now so you never miss one of our weekly episodes. Enjoy! Cheers. Making some dinner. Making some spaghetti sauce. That's a lot of pasta sauce. It is. Lots of pasta sauce. Can we eat it all tonight? We should eat all the pasta sauce tonight. We should not eat all the pasta sauce tonight. We should eat all the pasta sauce not tonight. We should eat part of the pasta sauce tonight and the rest after midnight. So not <laughs> Maybe. No. Oh, maybe. There we are. About to join up with our track. Look at that. Look at that. Only uh, 520 miles to go or so. Almost there. 530, yeah. Got all those all AIS. Those boats out there. That have showed up at some point or another. It looks so close when you look at it like that. All right, it's the morning after we left the Riviera Herjados. For the first time in uh, over a month now, we've got our fishing lines out since the uh, entire archipelago out here for quite an area around the Riviera Hejados is a no fishing zone. So now we're looking forward to getting some fresh fish. Especially since we don't have much fresh food left on board or, or pretty much anything actually. So after about a month since we last provisioned, sunrise is coming up beautifully. Put the spinnaker and the main back up. We doused the spinnaker last night. The wind picked up a bit so we went with just the Genoa and the main. And uh, Dan did the driving for all the night, but we uh, took that down this morning when we had first light come up, put the spinnaker back up, and went back to the autopilot. Since the wind right now is off our stern here, behind 120 degrees, and that's just a little bit trickier with the wind vane, just keeping a steady pace, especially with the spinnaker flying. It's a nice sunrise though. Beautiful out here. It's always interesting waking up and not being able to see land anywhere around you for 360 degrees. Especially under sail, all you hear is that awesome sound. Just the water passing by. And that's actually a pretty nice sound. Hillary's down below, she's taking a nap down there. I reckon she'll be down for a couple of hours, maybe even three or so. Is morning number two of our passage from the islands back to the mainland. We've done about 171 miles so far. A pretty slow afternoon. Picked up a bit over the night. Breakfast with whatever we have left, which isn't much. Coming up with some creative food options. We have been out of town for about a month-ish now. Our fresh produce is pretty much dwindled down to nothing. I think Ty is using our last potato. And our last three eggs. Last three of four dozen eggs. We have a tiny bit of cabbage left. The eggs and good. that's about it for fresh. Oh, we have one onion. One onion left. We're saving the onion. We're saving the onion. We like onions. But we've been coming up with some good meals still. We've been doing growing sprouts which is nice. It's kind of like a little fresh veggie. But we do have lots of peanuts. We've been making peanut butter. We have lots of beans. We've been making hummus. Although we have nothing left to dip in the hummus now. Do we have any tostadas left? We must have a few. A couple. Handful tostadas. It is time to make some homemade chocolate milk. We just use ingredients we already have. One part cocoa, one part sugar, and three parts milk. 
and we're just gonna top it off with cold water and that's it, that's chocolate milk. here 170 miles from land and all morning long we've had some boobies circling around us. They're always so friendly and curious. They love to check out and hang out with the boat. Why so? I don't know. Mm -hmm. And Hillary didn't get me any shampoo so oh. You didn't ask for any. It's hard to stand up while you're having a bath. I made it! Oh, <laughs> suckers! <laughs> oh, they're fighting for it. <laughs> oh. No, there's no room for it anymore! No, <laughs> oh, get out! No! No! I started to sit on the height. No, you do not. He just sat on the sail. Did you get that? <laughs> yes. These boobies up here are going crazy. They're like fighting to sit on the top of our mast. Trying to sit on the sail, the halyard, all sorts of stuff. I don't know why they can't just sit on the deck. There's plenty of room down on the deck, but they are they really want the top of that mast. They were leaning on the sail before. You're listening to the pedal jump net. Our evening uh, entertainment. Get to listen to everyone, check in, give their position, the wind and weather conditions, and yeah, how far along they are across the Pacific. Check out this sunrise. It is pretty nice back there. I'm gonna top our mast. We still have our booby hitchhiking friend. We had two of them for most of the night. One left around 2 a.m. Other guys still up there, still hanging out. Well, shortly after sunrise, our booby friends took off, or our booby friend took off, but not without leaving behind some gifts for us. Now we have a nicely bird poop covered deck to remember our friend, our visitor by. And look what else I found right behind me on the Dodger of all places, way the heck up in the air. That is a squid that somehow jumped way the heck up here, probably a good six feet above the waterline or more. The heck.
requires you to do more. We're coming up, uh, we're going to be about a mile off this big cargo ship here that's going to pass us. It's the first real boat, I guess, we've seen since we left Riviera Hejedos. There was a couple... Yeah, a long way off though. This is going to be like a mile, the others were like 12, 13 miles off, something like that. We're uh, going to give him a ring here and see if we can maybe get a bit of a weather report. We'll see if he helps us out and uh, gives us a little bit of a weather report. Sunbelt Spirit, Sunbelt Spirit, Sunbelt Spirit, sailing vessel Varuna, 16 over. Yeah, Sunbelt Spirit, this is sailing vessel Varuna off your port side. Over. I see, I keep my CTA for you one mile. Yeah, I see that. Mm -hmm. uh, it couldn't get you on one five. I just wanted to see if I could get a quick uh, sea and wind condition for the previous uh, 40, 50 miles behind you. That now I have uh, northwest, more northwest. Well, there he goes. That's the Sunbelt Spirit heading on by at 18 and a half knots, flying on by. Snuck up on us pretty quick, too, and they're coming right at you. Yeah. What day are we on here? Um, day three, I think. And then what are we going to do this evening? Um, we were talking about doing like corn muffins and chili for dinner. This sounds way too complicated now. There's way too much cooking. Oh, so today, what do we do today? This is what we do on a passage. We do nothing. Well, we do bits of things. I cleaned the bird poop just now. Yeah, that was good. I made some no-bit cookies. Mm -hmm. Disgusting, had peanut butter in them. They're delicious. Disgusting, had peanut made, butter in them. Made good breakfast, good hash, good hash for breakfast. I offered Hillary Vegemite, she refused. Yeah. Instead, she ate peanut butter cookies. We watched X-Files. Mm -hmm. Bit of an X-Files marathon. We've started watching them. And we listened to podcasts. Uh-huh. It's a bit rolly today. It is. The wind's picked up a bit, and we're uh, the wind. The, the swells are now a little bit more. What'd you say? They're a little more north, aren't they? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit more northwest. They were more west northwest yesterday. Today, the swells have picked up a bit, and they're a bit more northwest. Mm -hmm. So coming right off the quarter and kind of rolling us a bit. And the winds died down. They were stronger yeah. earlier. They've died back down a bit. They have. Yeah. Hence why we asked Sunbelt Spirit for a weather report, which <laughs> they said. <laughs> They said we're a big ship, we don't really pay attention to the winds behind us because they didn't bother us. <laughs> Unless it's 50 miles an hour or something. Puddle jump? See what happened with Aftermath. Aftermath, yeah, there's a boat on the puddle jump who has lost their steering ability. So they've kind of been trying to figure out how to jerry rig it and it sounds like his crew is trying to get off the boat somehow. Crew went off and he was jerry rigging something up with his uh, emergency tiller, which was, I don't know, it was located in a weird spot. It was like in his, he was a center cockpit, and his uh -huh. tiller was located inside his aft cabin. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't actually steer from above decks, which was very strange. Uh, and people were obviously advising for him to try and keep his crew on board, because it wouldn't be safe for him to go another 2,000 miles across the Pacific being below decks. Uh, yeah. A crazy situation. Yeah. They're asking for ships for other sailboats to come by them and take on the crew. Anyway. Alright, we've got a uh, cargo ship coming up on us here on our AIS. Uh, we've seen him kind of coming for a while, but he's doing about 17, 18 knots closing fast. A bit less than two miles away right now, and the CPA, or the closest point that he will come to us for approach, uh, we're looking anywhere from like a couple of hundred meters to a quarter mile. So I'm going to give him a ring just to make sure he sees us. I'm sure he does, but it's always good just to make contact at the early hours in the morning, just to make sure. We'll give him a ring to see. Grand Mercury, Grand Mercury, Grand Mercury, sailing vessel, you know, 16 over. Okay, you call it Grand Mercury, go ahead. Yes, this is the sailing vessel Varuna, two miles off your bow, and wanted to see if you can advise if you need me to alter course. Do you see me over? Uh, negative, negative, just keep your course speed. Otherwise, I'll overtake you your port side. Copy that, you will pass on our port side. Uh, thank you very much, standing by 1 6. Well, there you go. <laughs> I still think we're going to be a bit close, but we'll keep an eye on him. Alright, so 
There she goes now behind us, the cargo ship Grand Mercury, 200 meters long. Pretty close behind us. I think we're on about day four, four and a half. Finally got land in sight. I don't know if you can see it back there, but mountains. Well, this morning the wind died after a pretty windy night. So we dropped the main, just going with the spinnaker. We found a slide broken off. So we have a few extras on board. I'm gonna take it off and replace it here. There's the broken slide right there. We used to have a thing that stuck out on both sides, but now it is broken. There's a couple of metal things we want to look at when we get into Zibo Neho, and one is going to be see if we can find a fix for our whisker pole that we busted on the sail down to Riviera Hajeros. So here it is, this is the extension of the pole, the four spar pole, and it's just bent right in the middle because we didn't have the fore and after guy in the right spot. We had the fore and the after guy hooked up right here in the middle of the pole. We uh, now understand that if we had hooked it to the end of the pole, it might have supported it better and probably wouldn't have had that happen. Hopefully we can just get like some sort of an aluminium tube that will slide right in and replace the old one. The other one is to see if we can find a way to attach some metal to our hose pipe to help the chain from the windlass go down the hose pipe a little bit better. Don't know much about that. Hillary thinks it's bronze and I have no idea how to work with bronze. I don't think you can... Can you weld to bronze? I have no idea. We'll find out. This is my speedy stitch tool. Has a little bobbin in here. And it lets me to sew through and actually do lock stitches by hand in the sail, which is really handy for this tough edge of the sail material. Still no fishes. Where are the fishies at? I don't know, we're out in pretty deep water. We're hoping today we'll start getting a little bit shallower depths and maybe we'll have a, maybe we'll have a fish on the hook by the end of the day. I thought she was gonna take the sail down, but she's just stitching it right there on the mast, so. Makes it easier for all of us. Well, it has been flat, glassy calm since around midnight last night. We've had the motor running, which is a bummer. Not so fun. We do have the sails up, so we're kind of motor sailing now. And we just spent the last hour navigating around turtles. We thought it was a giant long line because we passed a Ponga fisherman who was like waving his arms and pointing and telling us like not to go this way. And we saw all these like things in the water that looked like floats. So I spent the past hour going off course, navigating around them. And we just realized they're turtles. And we thought- Live that, turtles. Live turtles, which is awesome. But they have like birds sitting on their back. They're just hanging out at the surface. A lot of them. A lot of them, tons, dozens. I love booby. I love turtle. <laughs> That's good poop on you, buddy. We hope to be getting into Zawat Neho this afternoon or late this evening probably. You know the water in there and the anchorage isn't the nicest. So we're gonna have a bath out here. Made some water this morning. And yeah, it's gonna cut your hair and then you can have a bath. We got a nice little afternoon treat. The wind picked back up. We've been motor sailing for now for the last, on and off last 10 hours probably since early AM. And the uh, wind just switched around, came back out of the kind of south uh, west and enough to get the spinnaker back out. So now we're cruising along much faster under sail than we are under uh, motor. So it's back to about six knots, give or take. Oh, it was about fun. Nice, the water's nice and warm. Okay, I think it's time for me to get a haircut. 
Hair salon opens in 15 minutes. Fifteen? Wow, that's a whoa. I didn't know there was a white. Well, last night, right after the sunset, as it was dark, we pulled in here to Zewatneo. We're here. Looks like a really nice town. Beautiful hillside. Looks like a pretty cool, just nice town to check out. You can definitely tell that we are in a different climate than we have been in. <laughs> we are officially arrived in the tropics. Sexual palm tree. Palm trees, it's warm, muggy. <laughs> I'm getting ready to head in, check out town here, kind of get the lay of the land, walk on solid ground for the first time in five weeks, and we'll also bring in our trash. So this is all of our trash, this little can for about five weeks. Try and consolidate everything as much as possible, get rid of most of the packaging before we bring it on board when we provision. But you can see in here, there's um, some tin cans. These are the tin cans that have a white lining inside, which is plastic, so we can't dump those overboard, as well as a few miscellaneous containers that we still have. And we stuff the cans with any sort of like plastic packaging, like the packaging from our cracker or tostada packets and whatnot to try and condense it as much as possible. Not too bad for five weeks, just this one little like five gallon, if it's even five gallon kitchen trash can. Any of our food scraps, paper type stuff goes overboard when we're offshore, it's compostable type stuff. So yeah, this is just basically plastic and the things that will not degrade in the water. Hope you enjoyed this episode. A huge thanks to all of you who support us. <laughs> oh my hands. If you'd like to help us keep making these videos, please check out our website or our Patreon page. We invented powdered cola with uh, chopped peanuts. And you mix them together and it yeah. creates Sounds cola gross. peanuts. Yuck. That's, peanut, that's peanut. not a good idea. Let's not do that one. <laughs>